Our scripture reading today comes from the book of Hebrews, starting in chapter 5, verse 11, through to the end of the chapter. It says, we have much to say about this, but it is hard to explain because you are slow to learn. In fact, though by this time you ought to be teachers, you need someone to teach you the elementary truths of God's word all over again. You need milk, not solid food. Anyone who lives on milk, being still an infant, is not acquainted with the teaching about righteousness. But solid food is for the mature, who by constant use have trained themselves to distinguish good from evil. May God add his blessing to our reading of his word this morning. Well, good morning. I hope everyone is having a wonderful day. Um, I just like to say coming to a message like this um, at a grad service, it hits me in a, bun a whole bunch of different ways. Um, being a graduate myself, being a parent and, and being a high school grad as well, um, all these things were flooding into my mind as I was developing and working on this sermon. And you know, as the points came clear in, these, in, in this service, in this message, and as I got into scripture, I say this a lot, but it really hit me because I've gone through these, these moments and these transitions in my life. And I want to begin by saying today how glad I am to have gotten married. I mean, I feel so blessed to have found my wife. God knew exactly what he was doing when he brought Sandra to me. I know, ah. Uh, <laughs> it must be nice being the preacher to say such nice things about your wife from the pulpit. But I'm not saying these things for the reasons you may be thinking. You see, <clears throat> up until I went to college, my mom bought all of my clothes and fed me all of my food. Not only did she buy me all of my clothes and all of my food, she also washed them and cleaned them and cooked them. The food, not the clothes. <laughs> and not only did she clean and cook for me, she also fed me with a spoon. She also dressed me. Not only did she feed me with a, with a spoon and dress me, she also pre-chewed my food and tried on all of my clothes and wore them for me to break them in. So you could see how going to college may have made my life difficult. Thankfully, I had a roommate who was wonderful, and he would do all those things for me as well. <laughs> but what was I going to do once I graduated from college? I had to get married, and fast. So now I have Sandra to do all those things for me now. And I couldn't be happier. I never have to dress or feed myself ever again. I don't even have to worry about it ever for the rest of my life. Obviously, that's an exaggeration. Well, I hope it was obvious anyway. I use that example because we literally have to do those things for Reuben, my six-month-old son. Granted, we don't preach you his food, but we do put it in a blender because he's just beginning to get teeth. And if I gave him a whole steak, he would choke to death. So, if we, so he needs it to be broken down. We have to introduce him to solids in stages, which is what we try to do with the youth and children growing up in our church. Two weeks ago, I spoke about passing the torch of our faith on to the younger generation. And Bruce Fawcett last week spoke about how to ensure that a, young, that, that a young person sticks with their faith. And this week I'm going to be speaking about the most important step of all. This is the step that actually makes your faith your own. Up to this point, as a church, we've tried to make it as simple as possible for the youth and young people to stay connected with their faith. But the fact is, until they take a hold of it for themselves, then... Everything else is useless. Some people who are in college and held on to their faith can testify to the difficulties there are when you step out of, your, out of your youth group and your homes into the world, and it's not as easy as we'd like to imagine. And we're going to look at a verse in the Bible that has always resonated with me. We're here today to celebrate. We're here today to celebrate the great achievements that our grads 
have accomplished. It was a lot of work. It was a long road. And I know there are many sleepless nights for a lot of them. And so I want to encourage our graduates today to celebrate, but also to be prepared for what's coming next. Because this is not the end of something. Well, it is the end of something, but it's not just the end of something. It's also the beginning of something new. And we need to remember to include God in those things. And this is why I've chosen Hebrews 5, 11 to 14. This is why God led me to these verses. And they read, we have much to say about this, but it is hard to explain because you are slow to learn. In fact, though by this time you ought to be teachers, you need someone to teach you the elementary truths of God's word all over again. You need milk, not solid food. Anyone who lives on milk being still an infant is not acquainted with the teachings about righteousness. But solid food is for the mature, who by constant use have been trained themselves to distinguish good from evil. I, as Bruce Fawcett did last week, would like to speak to two groups, three groups of people this morning. Parents and adults, the college graduates, and the high school graduates. First, I would like to speak to parents and adults about this passage. Not just parents, though, but the adults in this church, or any church for that matter. Who taught you? Why are you here this morning? Or if you're watching on YouTube, hi, why are you watching this message today? We never talk to the YouTube people. Are you a milk drinking Christian or are you a solid food eater? In this passage, the author is speaking to Christians who should know better. He said in verse 12, in fact, though by this time you ought to be teachers yourself, but you need someone to teach you the elementary truths about God over again. He's saying, you should know this by now. You've heard it before, but you've never moved on from the basics. And you don't even do those very well. Where did we receive our faith? Was it a supernatural experience? Did God part the heavens, send down a beam of light, and angels started singing from on high? And they pointed straight at you and said, you shall worship at First Baptist Moncton. That is all. No, I'm willing to bet that didn't happen. And if it did, you should go on tour, sharing your stories with all who should hear it. No, there was probably a human connection. There was probably someone in your life who encouraged you to go here. And I can say this, this was probably a human connection that happened to get you in this place, because that's how God works. That's how God has, has chosen to connect with us. I say this with certainty because I know this is how God has chosen to draw people closer to himself, by our relationships with other people. Once we become adults, we should be ready to begin seeking God on our own and helping others to find him. We should be at a point where, although we don't know all the answers, we can trust in him. We need to stop being spoon-fed And take those first steps towards faith. We need to fail. We need to make mistakes. We need to get lost. Because it's through those experiences in those moments that we actually learn how to trust God. And the more we practice those things, the more we learn those things, the easier it becomes to do them. I'm not the one doing ministries here at the church. I'm not the one who's bringing God anywhere. We heard this from Sam Chase when he spoke a few weeks back. I'm walking with God, and he's walking along with me. He's already here. I just have to be obedient, something which needs to be learned and practiced. My kids don't know how to listen. (laughs) Trust me. But with practice and with learning and with repetition, they get better at it, I hear. (laughs) It is true, and a milk drinker takes the easiest route, even if it causes a break in their relationship with God, because it's easier. But a solid food eater, someone who eats solid food, will make a sacrifice and even suffer sometimes for the sake of having integrity. 
If you have ever said to yourself or are saying to yourself now, I know it's a sin, but I want to challenge you this morning to take the solid, the solid food path and take the but out of the sentence and add, so I won't. We are to walk beside the young and to help them to see the way. And I mean the young spiritually. It's like teaching a child to ride a bike. What if we never let go? What if every time they wanted to go riding with their friends, you had to stop what you were doing and run along beside them, even when they were 15 years old? That'd be a pretty silly thing to witness. But that's what we do sometimes, isn't it? That's what some churches do. Whether we, we never teach them to ride on their own, or we don't teach them much at all. See, and that's the hardest thing for us as parents and adults to grasp. We have to trust ourselves. We have to know that we've taught them properly. We've taught you how to pedal. We've taught you how to stay balanced. I'm going to let go, and you know what? You're probably going to fall down a few times. You're probably going to stumble. You're probably going to trip. And it's going to be hard to watch. It is. I'm reminded of an illustration I heard once. What if my daughter Savannah was trying to thread a needle? I know even the most skilled of us have a hard time doing that sometimes. And I, I, I come into the room, and for whatever reason, she has a needle at five years old, I don't know. But she's trying to thread a needle. And she's pricking her finger, and she keeps missing the hole. And there's a little bit of blood. And as a dad, it kills me to watch her suffer and struggle like that. So I have two options. I can take it away and do it for her. Or I can let her do it. She's not doing anything dangerous with it. I mean, it's causing a little bit of pain. but And then imagine if I let her go through with it and she threads the needle herself. All of a sudden, her eyes light up. Daddy, I did it. Look what I did. And now she has the skills to be able to do that in the future. If I have the wisdom to... <laughs> to allow my child to do that on her own. How much more wisdom does God have when dealing with his children? See, God isn't looking for perfection from us parents and adults. He actually takes our imperfections and glorifies himself because of them. I have heard people say to me before in past ministries that they couldn't mentor the youth because they didn't know where they would start or how to do it. Great. They say they can't do something because they do not possess the skills to make it happen. Well, that's good. Because there's another guy in the Bible who had the same attitude. His name was Moses. And he was chosen to be God's mouthpiece. God chose to speak through Moses. And you know what? He couldn't speak well. But because of that, because he couldn't speak well, he had to rely on the strength of the one who created his mouth. I'll fill you in on a secret. We're not adequate. <laughs> I'm not adequate to be up here preaching to you. Just ask my wife. <laughs> but I do it because I have the message that I know God has given me this morning. And this is what's asked of you. Grasp the basics and let go. Allow God to guide you through the intricacies, the things that are more difficult to hold on to. Grasp the basics. Well, what are the basics? God loves you. I don't care who you are or what you've done. He loves you. He wants the best for you. Basics. Worship him. Be available. Say yes, Lord. Send me. Pray, read, live for him. Model this to our youth and to our children and to our young adults. They need to see the basics at work in our lives. Read to them. Have integrity in all aspects of our lives. Have no secrets. Be honest. Say I'm sorry when it is required. Pray with them. Worship with them outside of the church. Do family devotions. Have family non-negotiables. Things you will not break. There are no gray areas in some places. It's about being consistent 
and trusting the truth of God. I love you. The basics. Eating solids is about handing down the torch to the younger generation. It's about putting them first in their growth. For example, if it came down to it and I only had enough food to feed myself or my children, I would make sure they got the nutrition they needed first. Because they need it more than I do. It isn't about me anymore. It's about making sure our faith in Jesus Christ is passed down to the ones who need it. Our youth are dying to know Jesus. And we have got to make sure we're being solid food eaters for them. This verse is not about making us feel bad about where we are. It's an encouragement to move forward in our faith. If any of us are still drinking milk in their relationship with God this morning, then make a commitment today to step forward. Make a move to eating solids. Mentor someone. Join a small group. Step out and show the youth in our world that it is more than just attending church once a week. Our faith is alive. And it should be a part of every part of our lives. Home, work, school, church. And if you need to still learn the basics, don't be embarrassed by that. Learn it. And then take it seriously. And if you know the basics, then continue to use them. So parents and adults of our church, it's about knowing what the church is and when to pass it on. And now I would like to speak to the college graduates. And I'm going to ask them to come to the front row. <laughs> I know it seems strange, but right here in the front pew, because it has something to do with what we're going to be doing later in this service. So if anyone here is any of our graduates, if you could come to the very front, that would be great. What a great day to celebrate the achievements that you have done. Some of you are done. Some of you are just beginning something new. <laughs> and you'll be here again in the future. And I want to say well done. Congratulations. I simply want to encourage you this morning. I want to say to you that this can be a turning point for you or a moment of strengthening. Maybe you've never really grasped the basics and have always been on a milk diet. Maybe... No one's challenged you or allowed you to challenge your faith. What, challenge my faith? You heathen. <laughs> I'm dead serious about this. Maybe your relationship with God is very strong and progressing. But I want you to know this. Every Christian should know why they believe what they believe. And I know when I was growing up, I was taught that I just have to have faith. And trust God and he will answer any questions I have when I meet him in heaven. Well, the truth of the matter is, God welcomes an intelligent quest for the truth. He actually encourages us to do this in the Bible. Two verses. Found in Ecclesiastes 5.5, 5, it's better not to vow than to make a vow and not fulfill it. In Luke 14.25-33, large crowds were traveling with Jesus and turning to them, he said... If anyone comes to me and does not hate his father and mother, his wife and children, his brothers and sisters, yes, even his own life, he cannot be his disciple. And anyone who does not carry his cross and follow me cannot be my disciple. Now listen to this. Suppose one of you wants to build a tower. Will he not first sit down and estimate the cost to see if he has enough money to complete it? For if he lays the foundation and is not able to finish it, everyone who sees it will ridicule him, saying, <laughs> This fellow began to build and was not able to finish. Or suppose a king is about to go to war against another king. Will he not first sit down and consider whether he is able with 10,000 men to oppose the one, uh, the one coming against him with 20,000? If he is not able, he will send a delegation while the other is still a long way off and will ask for terms of peace. In the same way, any of you who does not give up everything he has cannot be my disciple. Weigh the cost. It means think about it. 
He wants us to think about it. He wants us to know him. He wants us to know the truth about him. God is not afraid of the truth. (laughs) Because the truth, if we really seek it and try to understand the truth, he knows he will always come out on top. Because God is the truth. Moving from drinking milk to eating meat involves testing God's word in our lives and getting more and more comfortable with the truth that he gives us. Drinking milk is only ever about listening to what you're told. But eating solid food comes with practice in doing. Seeing that the promises of God are true. Some grads who hear this or see this on YouTube this morning may have decided this is not for you. Maybe you're just here today to make someone happy, or maybe you're just watching this today to make someone happy. Some of you might be here because you really do value your relationship with God. Whatever the reason is, you're hearing this message this morning. Hear this. God is here, and God is real. How we respond to God and to that truth is important. And I want to challenge you today to take a serious look at the relationship you have with God and think about where you are. We need to practice, just like when we started eating food as kids. It's easy to swallow. We've tried many different flavors. Parents get that exciting time to see what face they'll make next. Sometimes my son, who's six months, Reuben, doesn't like peas. But they're important for him to eat in order to be healthy. Maybe some of the food you have eaten in the past has been sour or bitter. Maybe you've been hurt. We live in a fallen world, and that's going to happen sometimes. But the pain we endure is similar to mashed peas. (laughs) It was preparing us for the better food down the road. I can't say when that will happen, but it's the truth. God has better things prepared for us in the future. And as we slowly introduce new things to our diet, as we slowly introduce small portions of meat, eventually they get bigger and bigger, and you learn how to cut it yourself. And then you learn how to cook. Because you are now at the cooking stage. You decide how this recipe turns out. Will it be something good and solid? Or will it be another batch of milk? Some of you heard that last part of the sermon and said, that doesn't apply to me. The church doesn't work. It's broken. I don't want to be a part of that. And I challenge back. Part of what? The living body of Jesus Christ? Reaching the lost? Supporting and loving one another. Because that is what the church is called to be. Not judgmental. Not, some people have an opinion that churches are judgmental and set in their ways. That's not what they are. Sometimes churches get lost. Sometimes churches lose its focus on their mission. But they're called to love the world. They're called to love one another. And in fact, that's one of God's main rules. When Jesus is asked about what the greatest commandment is, he says every other rule centers around this truth. We have these rules because God only wants the best for us. And he does have rules. But the rules that God has for us are based on what he knows is best for our hearts. Think about it this way. I have rules for my kids. Why? Is it to be mean? No. It's because they need to learn how to function safely in society. What if I let my daughter Alexis go crazy in the house with a baseball bat? Would that turn out well? Well, if any of you know Alexis, you know the answer to that question is unequivocally no. I tell her no baseball in the house because she could break something. She could get hurt or she could hurt someone else. God gives us rules because he made us and he knows how we process things. We hold on to guilt long after we need to. It's the human condition. He gives us rules so we can live above those feelings in freedom. We need to look at him to provide the things that we feel that we're missing. I have seen God move in some powerful ways over the last five years. This does not mean that he is a genie and that he is 
at my every beck and call and whim. But I will tell you, even when you are in the lowest part of your life, even if things are crashing down and you feel like there's nowhere to go, he's there. And he's real. And if this morning I'm talking and you hear this feeling and you feel like I need to relight my torch, I want to encourage you to do it. Light it. Torches can be relit. And some of you are here today and say, yes, absolutely, I get it, I understand. Tell me something I don't know, Andy. Well, that's great. Then you're in the right place. And I want to encourage you uh, with these accomplishments to move forward and to keep that torch alive and burning strong. Keep running this race with integrity and keep practicing your faith until you get to know God in an even more personal way because that journey never ends. Keep your torches burning. So college grads, take the next step. Keep that torch lit. Parents and adults, remember to know how to pass it off and when to pass it off. And high school grads, I think they're all up front now. You're next. And this is it. This is where you can start making your own choices. You get to choose what school you go to. No more zoning. Hooray! You don't have to go to courses you don't, well, you probably will have to go to a few you don't like, but you get to pick your courses more. What's my major going to be? What do I really want to be when I'm done? Should I go to that party? Should I hang out with those people? Do I want to wake up this morning and go to church? These are all your decisions to make now. Sure, you can call your parents and get their advice. Sorry, parents, but you don't have to follow it. You're now at the place where your faith needs to be your own. And I pray that your families have lit your torch. And I pray that your families have handed that torch off to you. But now I can stand here holding a torch out as long as I want, but you need to grab it. Take that torch. Run with it. I want to talk to you this morning about how you start to eat solid food. What does it take? What does it mean for a high school graduate, graduate to eat, eat solid food? It means making a conscious decision to make church a priority in your life. It means helping out at a youth group as a youth leader. It means making your Bible a priority. It means praying regularly. It means never cheating. Always having integrity. It means giving up a spring break and going on a mission trip. It means calling your parents or your youth pastor to talk about opposing ideas that you might hear in college. It means not giving up on God because something that seems better comes along. I'm saying this because I am, for all intents and purposes, your youth pastor. I want to see you all succeed. And while this is a time to celebrate, and while this is an exciting time in your life, there has to be some reality. You don't get a special pastor anymore. Most churches don't have young adult pastors. Some do, but it's not the same. You don't get a special youth group anymore. But I want you to hear this. Youth group is not about the fun games we play. It's about the community we created. I call us a family all the time because that's exactly what we are. You need to realize that your community is now transferring even more to the bigger body of God. You need to find a church. And you need to get involved in that community. Because if you do that, I know you will meet God in more and more ways. It's about celebrating our lives with him together. That's the church. I sometimes hear people say, oh, I can be a Christian and not go to church. Well, that's maybe true, but it's incredibly difficult. And the statistics speak for themselves. It doesn't work out very poorly. Milk is about learning the basics. And the solid food is the great commandment. Love God by loving others through using your gifts for his glory. That's it. The torch will stay lit if you do that. 
So give selflessly of yourself. Keep moving forward, even when life gets hard. And you know something? It will. Life will get hard. But hard stuff is easier when you have a loving community around you who loves you. And I can tell you that this church loves you. And you will always find safety here. And now I want to ask Heather Kelly to come forward with Bibles for our high school graduates. Hi guys, um, just wanted to say a few things. I mean, obviously, looking at the at the pictures and everything there today, we've uh, watched most of you grow up uh, throughout uh, throughout the years, and so it can be hard to believe that you're already here, graduating from high school, university. Although Andy also graduated this year, so I'm not sure how he got out of the picture slideshow. But uh, anyways. Um, so this is going to be a very uh, exciting time, um, nerve-wracking time perhaps as well, moving on to new schools, new friends, uh, hopefully a new uh, church community as Andy has said, and just want to leave you with a couple thoughts uh, today. So the first is a passage from Colossians 4, 5 to 6. Be wise in the way you act toward others. Make the most of every opportunity. Let your conversation be always full of grace. Season with salt so that you may know how to answer to everyone. Also, in these times, we, uh, I think it's pretty much obligatory to give some sort of inspiring quote. So uh, there's tons of them uh, online, but I came across something uh, that C.S. Lewis wrote uh, yesterday. He was talking mostly about as Christians, um, the earthly, our earthly life is not the end. We have the promise of heaven, but uh, I thought it also applied to, to this graduation time, and it's this. There are far, far better things ahead than any we leave behind. I'll just ask the, the high school grads to come on up and get your Bibles. And just as you return to your seats, right there, I want to tell you, those are not Bibles. Well, they are Bibles. But they're not just Bibles. They're a symbol of the hopes and prayers that this church has for you. And every time you look at those Bibles, I want you to remember that you have an incredibly large family here that is praying for you always. And that's the truth. And now I want to ask the church to respond. I'm doing something a little out of the box this morning, but it's important. I want to ask the grads all to stand up here at the front and face the congregation. And I want to challenge you. I want to ask you, if you have watched any of these graduates grow up and have been praying for them or have been a part of their lives in any way, I want to ask you to come forward. This morning, I want to ask you to come forward and pray with them. I'm going to lead us in a prayer, and I would just like everyone to acknowledge the words being said for them this morning. And for those of you who are still in the seats, I'd ask you to stand in agreement with the words that are being said for these graduates. Because this is a time to celebrate, this is a time to lift our people to God, and to be with them. Let us pray. Lord God, we thank you for the accomplishments that these graduates have earned today. And Lord, we thank you that you have brought them through this church and that you have loved them and protected them. And God, we thank you that you're with them even now. And Lord, as they take their steps forward and move on with whatever's next in their lives, God, we pray that you're with them that you bring more people into their lives to help encourage them, to help strengthen them in their faith. And Lord, we pray that attacks of the enemy are, are kept away from them. He has no power over them. And we pray for your safety and guidance in their lives. So thank you, Lord, for bringing them this far, for the accomplishments and the achievements that they've had. 
And Lord, let this moment right now in this sanctuary be a moment they can think back about how much their church family loves them and supports them and wants the best for them. Let this be a defining moment in their lives today. For Lord, it's in your holy name we pray these things. Amen. And now as we return to our seats, I would like to ask you to turn in your hymn books to hymn number 641, All the Way. All the Way, hymn number 641. And we're going to sing the first and last verses of this hymn. God be with us this week as we just move forward in our lives. Be with our families and, our, and in our relationships. God be just the very center of everything we are. As we go out from this place this morning use us for your kingdom to glorify yourself for it's in your holy name we pray these things. Amen. <laughs>